Hello folks. Today in the workshop we have the Trident Maple that we did the thread grafting on in January. These are the thread grafts. I'm excited to announce that they're doing very well. There's the other one here on this side. They've got a lot of new growth, a lot of extended growth. At the base of the trunk where we did the thread grafts, they're already larger on the growing side than they are on the side that they go through the trunk, which is a good sign that the grafts are actually taking place. I'm not going to rush it because, as everybody knows, I failed at grafting once before, um, but looks like this time it's been a success. I'm going to let these grow unchecked for the rest of the season just to ensure, um, and I'm going to allow the branches back here that we put through the through the trunk of the tree to create those branches, um, I'm going to leave them attached so it's still supplying nutrients to the branch and everything, and um, let them be for this season. We'll look at them again this fall and see if it's time to go ahead and separate them. That way, I'm ensured that they're 100%. They have 100% taken um, with this much extension. This this is the extension we've had so far this season with this branch. Um, I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to have any issues from now. I did end up having to remove the wire. They are growing so fast that the wire, the bark was growing around the wire, so I did have to remove the wire. Um, what we're going to do today on this tree is work on the upper portion. As you can see, I've got long shoots all over this tree, and we need to kind of get this thing in line to continue the, the process that we're going to do in the styling of this tree. I have decided that the top that I have on this tree is a little too far forward for what I'm trying to accomplish. So I've allowed a few leaders up here, and I'm going to show you these two leaders. Um, they're almost touching the ceiling, and that's an eight-foot ceiling in here. Those two leaders there that you see are growing in just about the perfect position for what I'm trying to accomplish for an apex on this tree. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one of these two today and I'm going to remove the other one and I'm going to be doing a lot of thought, put a lot of thought into this area of the tree to try to figure out what I want to do for an apex. I had a perfect apex on here and I kind of let it get out of control last year and, and now I've had to kind of step back and punt and um, this is the result. I mean, this is, I couldn't ask for anything more. But nonetheless, what we have to do first is get all these long, overgrown branches that are really irrelevant to the design because these are actually coming off of the thread graft branches. I want to go ahead and trim all these back and compact this area of the tree a little bit more. Now, I've already done this once this year. So this is actually the second time I'll be doing this on this tree. So let me go ahead and get started with that and then we'll come back and we'll have a little bit further discussion as far as what we're going to do with the new apex and, um, and the continuation of the, the training of this tree. Alright, first off, we need to shorten all this extension growth, as I call it, for lack of a better term right now, um, and, and get it back in. What I, my philosophy is, what it will do is the energy that's being expended on these branches right now will be then in turn redirected to our grafted branches and our grafted branches will benefit in extension growth there. Um, so what I do with these, I don't cut them all the way off, I will cut them back to just two sets of leaves. So I'm just going to go around this entire thing and like I said, this is actually the second time I've done this this season. So. A lot of my trees are doing a lot better than I anticipated, and I think I have a lot, a lot of that has to do with the way I've trained them up to this point. It's just a matter of going back through this entire thing and cutting off all the extension growth, with the exception of the two grafts, of course. We don't want to touch those at all. But we just need to come back and eliminate a good majority of what this extension growth is. This extension growth does nothing for the final design of the tree. Yes, it's bringing energy up into the rest of the tree, um, but it's not really what we need right now in the, in the design or, or the, the final plan of this tree. So I want to focus on 
allowing things to grow that I'm intending on keeping as a final design aspect of this tree versus things that are going to be removed in the next growing season or two. And when you do this, you kind of need to consider that because I do have some extension growth like this, for instance, that's probably going to be a branch over here. So I don't want to whack this thing off and I want to, you want to make sure you get down inside the tree and look so you can see where these branches are coming from before you cut them. Because um, a lot of this stuff can get tangled up and misinterpreted when you're uh, going through here. So make sure you take your time when you do this and go through the tree and, and see where these branches initiate from. And make sure you're only cutting things that you you know, anticipate not needing. This one goes all the way back, but I've got a couple other ones back there as well. I don't want to have a, a reverse taper situation or an ugly swell point where you have several branches coming from one point. If you let them all grow, it's going to swell there and it's going to be kind of, you can very easily get a reverse taper situation. So you want to make sure you, you're leery about that as well. Now, also because these things are epically dominant, you want to uh, cut back and try to compact the top of this as much as possible as well to keep that apical dominance from growing out of control. Um, which I've got some of that going on right now. I'm going to be going through the interior workings of this tree and figuring out what branches I want to keep for the final design. What I don't. And i got a little friend in here. Haha! <laughs> cool. The keeper of the tree. Sorry buddy. Didn't mean to disturb you. I have a gray, gray tree frog that uh, decided to make his home in this tree. So we're going to try not to disturb him as much as possible. But at the same time, we need to do what we need to do to get this stuff taken care of. Um, most of my trees are full of little tree frogs and anoles, which are the little green lizards everybody mistakes for chameleons. It's actually the side branch off of the main branch. That's a little unruly. And this actually, what you're looking at here, this cluster here, is actually the old apex um, that was there this spring that I wired up. Um, like I said before, I've got two on the top here. And um, I need to make up my mind what I'm going to do here and which one I'm going to keep. And hmm. what I'm doing now is just kind of getting down into where both of these are originating from, I'm trying to come up with a viable solution as to which one I want to maintain as the apex. That one appears like it's going to be just about okay. The front, the front apex of this tree. Let me zoom out so we can have a little bit of a thought process on what we're doing here. All right, we have these two apexes up here. They're pretty much right in front of each other. There's one in the front, one in the back. Um, they're both in the, in the location that I wanted them to be in as far as the apex is concerned. Um, so that's why they're kind of in line. It's because that's about the center line of the tree. Um, I have one that's a little farther back from the center line of the tree, which is actually the back one. And I have this, this one in front here, which is just about dead center of the tree. Um, I'm going to still keep this here in the front as the faux apex for now. I don't want to do any major cutting to this tree at this point in time in the season. Um, you know, trimming the new branches and the new growth is okay to do right now, but you don't want any major cuts on old wood right now. Um, I've had problems in the past, learning experiences I'll pass on to you, where I've done trunk chops even at this point in time, and I've had it die all the way back to the soil line, so I know better than to do any major cutting on this, this tree right now. You save that for, for spring or after it goes into dormancy in the fall. Um, but I've made a decision that I'm going to keep this front one, and this is going to be the new apex of the tree. Um, so I'm going to get some concave cutters, and I'm going to go ahead and remove the back one. The back one's not what, not what I'm looking for. It was a possibility, and I wanted to leave it on there to this point in time where I could actually really get inside this tree and look. But now that I see where they're both originating from, I am going to go ahead and make an executive decision to keep the front one 
What do I really got to get in there and look to see what you're dealing with? Could do that. That might even be more viable, to be honest. I could always bring this forward with some wire. Look at it from a couple different angles. So just, I don't, you know, I've got them now, and you know, I need to make a decision. But I need to look at it from all angles and 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 take all the options and possibilities in, in mind before I do this because once it's gone, it's gone. Yes, I can always grow another one, but I've got it now and I might as well go ahead and, and, and utilize it if I can. Now that I'm looking at it from this angle here as well, I see I have a couple other things that I can use to help heal and that would actually be overall a better top. Even though it's currently leaning backwards now, I have a dormant bud here, which is going to bring it forward next season when I cut that off. So I'm actually going to remove the front one. And like I said, that's that's just the uh, that's the evolution of your design. I mean, you you uh, think one thing and make sure you look at it at all angles and in your mind, in your mind's eye, figure out what. The tree is going to look like later. What this is, this is just a paint pen. I'm going to go ahead and come in here and mark where I'm going to be making a cut on this tree next fall and or spring. And the portion I'm going to be removing. That way I'll have some kind of general idea of what I was thinking. When I go to do that next spring and why I decided to keep the one I was I'm keeping. And... Uh, Go ahead and remove the other one. And what I'm going to do is let the one I'm keeping grow freely, like always. And keep all the rest of the growth cut back hard. One final look before I make the cut, just to make sure this is exactly what I'm going to do. Yeah, I can always bring that around forward, so... Yep, decision's been made. Cut's taken place. Our new apex has been chosen. Of course, you're looking at the back of the tree right now. But this tree was quite where the where the current apex is on this tree. If you can see, it's way out here. In 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 the scope of this tree, it's it's too far forward. To me, it makes the tree look like it's. I mean, you want a tree that's inviting and that's bowing, but th this is just a little dramatic for me. Um, this is almost in line with the center line of the tree, and what I can do, and it's what I've done in the past on this tree, is I can use wire and I can bend it around and forward to get it just right into the center line. Um, it's going to allow me to put more movement in the top of the tree, and uh, I think overall, personally, it's going to be a better decision than what I was working with before. So, decision has been made, the cut's been made. Now it's just a matter of suppressing the rest of this growth at the top. And it's the tallest branch up here already. So, it's not going to have any competition. It's going to remain the apex I'm not going to have anything else that's going to shoot up and try to compete with it like I did before. Before we had two of them there, and this was actually the the weaker of the two before. Um, but now that that one's been removed, this one's going to, to be the dominant branch. And it's going to get most of the energy and most of the growth. Um, I may end up trying to wire this one this season um, before the season's end. Just to wire it in position before it gets too large because the base... I mean, the base of these things, and granted, they've been growing since January, but the base of these things is already, I don't know, was that pencil length, pencil thickness? And if they start getting too much bigger, they're not going to want to bend, and they're nice and green and pliable. As soon as I say that, it breaks. And again, like I was showing you in another video, you can tell how far these will go before they bend, and if you notice, it'll bend, 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 and then it reaches that critical point, and it just snaps. 
So I know that, you know, I can only bend it so far. If I bend it further than that, it's going to snap off and then it's going to be dead. So I may end up doing a little bit of wiring on that now to try to get it to the exact position I want it to be in now um, before it gets any thicker because obviously the thicker the branch the harder it is to bend the more brittle it will become um, but we're not going to do it today we're not this this isn't the time to be doing that I'm going to wait a little bit longer in the season once everything's settled down because right now you've got a flush of energy going into it and and all the sap and all this energy is pushing through them right now. We want to wait till it's maybe midsummer after the initial flush of growth has stopped. Let it calm down a little bit and a little bit less sap running through it and it's more towards you know maintaining the leaves and, and, and building energy to get down to the roots for storage for the following growing season. And then I'll try to do a little bit of wiring. But right now it's it's in rapid growth phase and we don't want to wire just yet because as you just saw they are they'll they'll bend but they're brittle they'll get to that critical point and just and i don't want to uh, risk losing a branch that i intend on keeping i'm going to leave this grow this is actually going to be a, a primary branch i have number one branch number two branch i'm going to have a number three branch which is right over here and this is number four branch I'm going to leave this on. And my little buddy here is being very patient with me. Let's see if I can get a close up of him for you. He's a really neat little tree frog. It's uh, Most people, when they see a tree frog, they see a green tree frog. This is of the similar species of tree frog that the greens are. Well, he's a gray one and he's got bright orange legs. On the underside of his legs, it's bright orange. Sorry if I'm making anybody dizzy here. See if I can get in here at him. There he is. That's my buddy. That's the keeper of the trident. So without scaring the junk out of him any further, I'm gonna go ahead and get this tree back out. I'll do a quick 360 for you again. And um that's pretty much it at this point in time. Continue to let these thread grafts grow wild. Um, not worried about them bending down or doing anything along the lines of that. I'll be able to wire them back into shape later. I don't plan on keeping much more of this branch than here anyway. Um, so, you know, if they fall over, not a big deal. Like I said, these two here I'm keeping to uh, allow the thread to grow and thicken to get to the proper caliper. Doing the same with this. This is another one that's back there at the trunk. And we'll just continue with our regimen that we currently have on this tree, which is fertilizing water and let the sun do its thing. Thank you guys for watching. Summer Update 2012 Trident Maple.